The Holy Day of Atonement, as we are observing, is uniquely demanding. We are commanded to fast, which gets the entirety of our existence involved in the observance of this Holy Day. We are continuously and physically reminded of the fact that this is a holy day that we are observing. There's no way that we can easily forget that. We are all in, as it were. We are hungry and we are thirsty. But I don't need to remind you of that. You are well aware. But I think uh, it is something that we can appreciate because it offers us such a a stark reminder of how difficult it is to live without the blessings from God that we need to sustain us. It doesn't take very long before we realize how much uh, we physically uh, need water and food and coffee. These things are important, and I firmly believe that coffee is a blessing from God. Uh, but we need these physical things. Uh, and we can think about this uh, even broader and apply it in a spiritual sense. When we think about what it is like to live without a source of God's truth to sustain us. Without the truth, we would spiritually starve, unable to nourish our spirit and guide us in life. Just take a moment to imagine what that would be like uh, without having any guide to help you turn your life around, how different that would be, how difficult your life would be. Certainly for those who have been in the church for a long time, you uh, know how important it is. And for those who have just uh, turned to the church, you may realize and uh, how great the effect is once we start applying the truth in our lives. And to be without that is a, a big problem. Uh, and that is what I think we should all be mindful of on this day. I'd like to turn over to Matthew 5 and read verse 6 for a very familiar scripture. And this covers the very self-same concept that I'm talking about with you right now. Matthew 5 and verse 6, it's one of the Beatitudes, it states this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. This day of atonement offers us a very real reminder of how much we need to sustain our physical lives, but this should also remind us of how important it is to seek out righteousness and truth. And th these people, uh, if we count ourselves among those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, these are blessed. These are the people that uh, God commands us to be. If we are sick of what the world has to offer, if we crave the truth instead, we are promised that we will find what we need. We will be fulfilled. Turn with me back to Isaiah 55. I'd like to read verses 1 and 2. This too talks about those who hunger and thirst. Isaiah 55 and verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, you who have no money. Come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. The instruction that we have here from Isaiah is to seek sustenance from the source of real truth. And there is no price for that truth. We can have it freely. It's there for us to obtain it. And money spent on anything else here is bound not to bring us the abundant life that we should be seeking, that we are seeking. The priority here is clear, to seek spiritual sustenance rather than anything else that might provide physical sustenance. That's where we should shift our priorities. God, we know, provides us with 
all that we need physically as long as our priorities are on seeking the kingdom and its righteousness. But just because that truth is freely available for us doesn't make it free to produce and free to broadcast and free to disseminate and free to print. It takes resources for the gospel to be preached to the world. Let's go over to Acts 4, and I'd like to read verses 32 through 35. There we go, Acts 4, verse 32. This is about the early church and how they shared what they had. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things that he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any one among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they were distributed uh, to each as any one had need. The story stands out to me as um, an example of great sacrifice, great trust, great faith, in fact. We can see here very clearly that this early church was so engrossed in seeking the truth and so involved in the work that they were willing to sacrifice everything that they physically had to put their livelihoods behind it. And why? Why did they do that? They wanted to contribute to the work of the church. That's why they did it. That's the same kind of attitude that we need to have is to put ourselves put what we have uh, available to us behind the work of the church. Turn with me to Mark 12, and I'll read verses 41 through 44. Mark 12 and verse 41. We might picture that this is a scene that is much like what we're doing today. There's a a service going on here. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all of those who have given to the treasury, for they put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. We have this example as well of an offering made by a poor widow. She didn't have much, and the uh, amount of our offering, as we understand from the words of the Bible, isn't important to God. It's the attitude that we have when we give. She gave all that she was able, and she made a magnificent sacrifice to the generations that have been inspired by her example for thousands of years. She gave two mites, and we're reading about her today, 2,000 years later. Making an offering to support the work of the church that sustained her life was more valuable to her than anything physical that she could have purchased with that small amount of money. On this holy day, as we are reminded of our physical hunger and physical thirst, we should also be reminded of our spiritual hunger and thirst for the truth. If you're listening or watching right now, You are the benefactor of the tithes and the offerings that help to pay for the resources that it takes to produce and broadcast the preaching of the gospel. You make a difference in how this word goes out to the world so that others 
who hunger and thirst for righteousness can also receive this. As we know, we are commanded to bring an offering on this day so that it can be used to sustain your spiritual life, but the spiritual lives of many others and generations to follow.